hi, everyone. My name's Unsi. Uh, I'm an engineer at Pivotal working on Diego. Diego is a ground up rewrite of the elastic runtime. So fair warning, this talk is technical, but I'm hoping to make it accessible to everyone here. So let's dive right in. First question I'm going to answer is, what is it exactly that we're rewriting? Second question is, why on earth are we rewriting it? I'm going to show you what Diego is and how it works. And I'm going to give you a little glimpse into the future. So let's dive into you know, what it is that we're rewriting. So what's being rewritten is the following. You can, you, can, you can look at Cloud Foundry as a black box. And as a black box, Cloud Foundry's inputs are you know, a developer using CF to push an app. What the black box will do for you is take your app, stage it, run n instances, and keep them running, and then emit a route to the app so that your users can connect to your app through you know, the internet with a browser. So let's peel back and look at what's going on inside Cloud Foundry. Well, the first thing you see is the cloud controller. This provides the API that the um, command line client talks to. You also see the router. This is the, the component that's you know, taking in all of that internet traffic and routing it to your apps. But if you pull back even further and look at how the sausage is made, and this is what we're going to talk about today, you'll find the DEA pool. These are the droplet execution agents that actually run your app. And one of the components in the DEA pool is the DEA itself. It's responsible for staging your apps and running your apps. And you also have Warden which is responsible for containerizing your apps. This is what keeps one app separate from another. Warden's responsible for all of the containerization. Um, another component back here is the health manager. The health manager makes sure that what is desired, what CC says should be running, and what's actually running on the DEAs is in sync. So if an app goes missing, it's the health manager's responsibility to bring it back up. Now, all of these components talk to each other using NATs. Um, and this is what we're rewriting. <laughs> So why? Why on earth are you rewriting all of that? Well, that's a really, really, really important question now, isn't it? Well, here's why. It's the same reason you always rewrite something, right? We're finding it hard to add new features, and we're finding it hard to maintain existing features. Now, the real question you have to ask is why? And you really need to ask this question, because you really need to understand what the problem is before you try and you know, fix it. So let me, let me talk about why. Let me talk about some of the, the issues that we're hitting with the current runtime. First off, there's a lot of tight coupling between these components, and there's poor separation of concerns. So let me illustrate with a couple of stories how this plays out. Um, one sort of concrete implication of this is what I call orchestration. So here you are. You're, on, you're, you're a developer on your console, and you say, hey, Cloud Foundry, scale me up some instances. You know, I, I need three more instances. Well, Cloud Controller is going to receive that message, and Cloud Controller, you'd think, would just turn around and tell the system, hey, make it so. But that's not actually what happens. Instead, what Cloud Controller does is it says, hey, you start and, and, and you stop. And the way it does this is it has a picture in its head of all of the DEAs and of all of the apps running on those DEAs. And so what the Cloud Controller does is it looks and it says, hey, I think that you know, the two instances you've just asked for, they should go over there. And the reason it did this is because it saw that there was a lot of availability on those DEAs. And so it made the decision to put your app over there. So it decides to send start messages to those DEAs. Great. What's wrong with this? Well, what's wrong with this is that the cloud controller's picture of reality might not be what reality actually is. And so what happens here is, sure, this start message goes through when your app starts running, but this start message hits a full DEA and nothing happens. And if you look at it even further, in reality, what should have happened is your apps should have ended up here, because these are the DEAs that actually have the most availability. What's the problem here? Well, the problem is that the cloud controller has too much responsibility. It's the great puppeteer. And it has to have all of this knowledge of the world. And it's hard in a distributed system to have an accurate picture of the world at all times. That's the problem of orchestration. Let's look at another problem, the problem of triangular dependencies. So for this, let's bring the health manager into the picture. Um, uh, one of the things that we do oftentimes is have to upgrade the DEA. Say we've written some new DEA code. The way we do this is with a rolling deploy. We, we stop a DEA and um, move its apps around. And then only once those apps have moved do we actually kill that DEA and then bring up a new one. So here's how this works. Let's say this DEA is going away. Well, it tells the health manager, hey, I'm off. The health manager notices that it's missing these apps, that these apps are on that DEA and need to be moved. The health manager tells Cloud Controller, hey, I've got some apps that need to move. Cloud Controller says, OK, I can handle that. Let me start those apps for you. As soon as the health manager sees that those apps are running, it sends an all clear to the DEA saying, OK, you're good to go, and the DEA goes away. 
Great, well, what's wrong with this? Why is this problematic? Why is this triangle problematic? Well, for one thing, if, you know, if a developer comes along and says, I have this great idea for the DEA, I want to add a feature, you can do that, but you kind of have to really step back and think about how is this going to affect the cloud controller and the health manager? If I add this, is it going to sort of break the interdependencies that are sort of implicit here? And if it does, what's going to happen? Bad things, usually. Another more obvious problem is if you're doing a rolling deploy and the cloud controller falls asleep or whatever, and then your message goes off to space, the start never gets sent, the apps never start, these apps die, and everyone's unhappy. <laughs> so, problems. Uh, what's at the core of this? At the core of this is complex interactions. Complex interactions between distinct components. This makes it hard to test the system, and it makes it hard to reason through the system. So hard. Changing gears. Another thing that we found with the current runtime is that it's very domain specific. You've heard Cloud Foundry is all about apps. Well, it really is all about apps, 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 apps. So for example, when you push an app, um, Cloud Controller knows you're talking about apps, but so does everything else in sight. It's all app, 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 which is fine until you want to extend to a new domain. So for example, a cron-like job where you just want to have something run every now and then, that's really not an app. It's a different sort of thing. Um, makes it hard to extend our platform. A similar thing is that the current uh, uh, system is very platform specific. So the DEA and Warden, they're running apps in Linux. And they know all sorts of stuff about Linux. There's Linux specific code all the way riddled throughout both components. Now that's fine if all you want to do is Linux, but if you want to support something like Windows as well, you now have two options. Either you fork and you kind of find all those bits and turn them into Windows bits, or you sort of put them together and have a bunch of if-else statements everywhere. And the problem with that, of course, is that it's really hard to maintain. We don't want to do that. OK, last problem before I talk about happy things. Um, the DEA and Warden are long-lived, long-running processes. Uh, they have tons of concurrency. And they have lots of low-level OS interactions. And they're all written in Ruby. And when you do something like this in Ruby, Ruby begins to crack. And we've been, we've been experiencing that pain. So, so let me just quickly summarize. Why do this rewrite? This problem of orchestration, these triangular dependencies, this tight coupling, poor separation of concerns, this domain specificity and platform specificity, and Ruby sort of at the heart of it just barely staying alive. Um, all of this has made it hard to add new features and maintain existing ones. So let me show you Diego. And let me show you, in particular, the aspects of Diego that we think are tailored to solve these problems. So Diego, let's, let's tackle Ruby first. So what do we do with Ruby? Well, we switch to Go. So we're writing the whole thing in Golang. <laughs> Golang fans, OK. All right, why on earth? Because it has strong concurrency support. It has strong low-level OS support. It's strongly typed. It forces you to think about error handling. I know people don't like this about Go, but I love it. It's like, OK, I have an error. What do I do with it? You have to think about it. And most of all, it promotes developer discipline. It's not like Ruby doesn't promote developer discipline, but you have to sort of really work hard to be disciplined in Ruby. Go really, really just wants you to be disciplined. It makes it a lot easier. Well, it makes it a lot harder to be lazy, and this is good. So switching to Go. What else? Well, I talked about this domain specificity. Everything is an app in the current Elastic runtime. We think we've come across what we hope is the right abstraction. So in Diego, you don't talk about apps. Instead, you talk about one-off tasks. These are things that Diego guarantees to only run once. Um, and you talk about long-running processes, LRP for short. It's kind of a mouthful, but it's what we came up with. Um, and with a long-running process, you can tell Diego to run n instances and keep them running. So not apps, but tasks and LRP. So let me, let me show you how this breaks down. So is this the right abstraction? Well, here's, here's Diego's architecture picture. It's still got the CC in there, cloud controller. But now instead of the DEAs, we have what we call the executor pool. And the executor pool is responsible for running tasks and launching long-running processes. So now you as a developer come in and you push your app. And the first thing the cloud controller needs to do is stage your app. So what it does is it sends a stage app message to a component that we have called the stager. And all that the stager does is take that domain-specific notion of app and translate it into 
a generic notion of task. So we go from staging app to running a task in our generic executor pool. Once your task is staged, your app is staged, Cloud Control comes back and says, OK, now run that app for me. And the app manager uh, does the similar thing to the stager. It takes that domain-specific notion and turns it into a generic um, long-running process. So why do we do this? Because this allows us to express specific domain app in generic terms. We go even further. The right-hand side, that executor pool, is actually made up of a lot of little subcomponents. The first one is the rep. This is something that knows about tasks and long-running processes. But if you think about it, all of that eventually just turns into, you know, run this stuff for me in a container. And so we have another layer called the exec that knows how to run generic recipes that give you all the tools you need to do any of the things that you need to do in a container. And then we have Garden, a rewrite of Warden in Go, that manages those containers. And all the way at the back is the Linux backend that's actually running those containers. What does this give you? What this gives you is this gradient where high specificity, domain-specific stuff is on the left, app, app, app. And all the way on the right, it's very generic. Containers, Linux, tasks, LRPs. What this means is if you want to add a new feature, you just have to go here. You just implement it in terms of tasks and LRPs, and the whole right-hand side just works. This gives us flexibility. All right, so that's domain specificity. Let's talk about platform specificity. Well, Diego is built from the ground up to be platform agnostic. Cloud Controller doesn't care what platform you're on. Neither does the stager or the app manager or the rep or the exec or even Garden. We've put all of the Linux where it belongs, in the back end. What this means is it makes it possible to support multi-platform pretty easily. In fact, you just need two things. You need to have your Linux backend, and say to support Windows, you need to have your Windows backend. And there's one other thing which I haven't gone into, but um, we have a Linux binary that we put into the container to run alongside your long-running process or task. Um, we inject it in, and it's side-loaded, and it sort of helps manage the lifecycle. You have to write a Linux version of that, and you have to write a Windows version of that. And both of these things satisfy a very simple interface, so it's pretty easy to do. And our friends at Iron Foundry are banging away at uh, implementing the Windows version of this, and we're very excited to see what happens. Docker, Docker, Docker fits right in, too. So we're excited to see how that plays out. OK, so let's, let's start to go into the meat of it. How do we solve the problem of orchestration of triangular dependencies of this poor separation of concerns? Well, let's talk about orchestration. So remember, the problem of orchestration was the cloud controller had too much responsibility. It was all about start and stop and start and stop, and it had to have a picture of the world in its head. But we want to do away with that. And so what we've done is we've, we've made the cloud controller's job a lot easier. It doesn't have to tell us what to start or stop. We don't care. All it needs to tell us is what it wants. So for example, the cloud controller just says, hey, I want three of these. And we go off and we do it. But how do we do it? The way we do it is we have our executor pool knows how to hold an auction and automatically distribute those long-running processes optimally. This solves the problem of orchestration. Now, what about the problem of triangular dependencies? What about that health manager? Well, because we have this pool that sort of knows how to monitor itself, we have a self-managing, self-monitoring, and self-healing pool. So for example, if one of the executors, this full one in the bottom left, just disappears, whoops, Amazon decided that it was done with that computer. Um, what do we do? Well, the mesh notices, and it automatically starts those apps for you. Low downtime. It's eventually consistent. Because we have this, we don't need the health manager. He goes away. So does the triangle. I worked on the health manager. <laughs> and now I shoot it in the head. That's fine. Cool. So robust, right? Robust. The thing keeps running. But a distributed auction, a distributed self-healing thing is complex. Um, and the reason it's complex is because you get all of this scary emergent behavior, right? It's sort of like we've set up a game, and we, we, we have these players in the game, and we tell them to go play. And it's hard to, sometimes hard to reason through what's actually going to happen. So we wanted to name this and, and face this head on. And so what we've done is we've come up with this notion of simulation-driven development. So I'm going to show you a movie here. This is a simulation of 100 executors. So each row is an executor. Each executor is starting up 
with a bunch of apps, those little black dots. And so what you can see is that you know, we have a lot of apps spread across a lot of executors, and the distribution of apps is not very good. There's a couple of guys up there who are really full, and there's some executors that are really empty. You know, what you want, ideally, is a better distribution of apps. So, so let's, assuming we start with a kind of terrible distribution of apps, what I'm now going to do is launch 1,000 instances. I'm just going to say, hey, Diego, I want 1,000 things. I'm going to simulate it using our auction algorithm. And this is what it looks like. Here it is. This is in real time, starting those apps. There's nothing coordinating this. We just said start 1,000, and it did. And what you notice is that it filled in those gaps, right? It, it, it gave us a better distribution at the end than we had at the beginning. If you are skeptical, that is great. You should be. This is just a toy you engineers have built. This is just a silly little simulation. What does this have to do with reality? Well, we've taken great pains to make sure that this simulation code isn't just used to drive out the simulation, but is actually the same code, not copied and pasted, the same code that's running in production. So if we think that we need to tweak the algorithm, we can tweak it and run an in-process, in-memory simulation to see what the changes are. That gives us a quick feedback loop. And then we can try it out in the cloud in a beta environment and see that it works. And then we can push it to production. So why, why go to all this trouble? Well, Remember what I said earlier, complex interactions are hard to test and hard to reason through. And it's tools like this, the simulation-driven development, that help us fight that problem. But the auction, the simulation, that's only part of the deal. Um, I showed you this picture. And of course, this picture is simplified because this is a talk. Right? There's a lot more going on here. We have 14 small, single responsibility components. I think when you take a lot of microservice things, you probably end up with a macro pile or something. Right? Like, there's a lot of stuff here. So what do you do? Well, you know, we unit tested everything, and that's great. That guarantees or you know, helps us guarantee that each component is well behaved. But there's a bigger picture question that's missing when you do this. How can you be sure that all of these components work together? I mean, that's what really matters. I like to think of this analogy. Each of these many components is an actor. right? It has a role. It has a, a sense of what it is. It knows that it's internally consistent. But Diego is a play. And the play only makes sense if the actors play the right role and they play the right role correctly, if they deliver the correct lines at the correct times. And so what every good play needs is a shared narrative. It needs a script. And we found a way to codify that in code. We have a shared library that codifies the interrelationships between these components. And all of these components import this library. And whenever two components talk with each other, they're always talking through this library. This gives us one place where we can see what the script is and analyze it and try to understand it. And with this script, we can write comprehensive integration tests that make sure that all of our little mini components are actually dancing this dance correctly. Again, this makes things more robust. So why go to all this trouble? Let me end with this. Complexity in a distributed system of this scope is real and necessary. You can't hide from it. You shouldn't. Diego embraces this and tries to make its complexity explicit, transparent, and therefore easier to reason about. So quick summary, tasks and LRPs, this flexible abstraction. It's platform independent, so it's extensible. It's self-managing, so it's robust. And we think we have a handle on complexity, which makes it agile. We can swap and change these ideas pretty, pretty easily. So let me quickly show you the future. Um, uh, staging is done. Uh, we're halfway through making Diego run your long-running processes. We have support for you know, Linux with Heroku-style build packs, but you can build different ways of staging apps as well. But we're aiming for this to begin with. And then here's a long list of features, you know, placement pools, Docker file support, process types, persistent disk, shell access, .NET, auto rebalancing, no downtime deploys, custom health checks. You know, I'm an engineer making promises, so take everything with a grain of salt. But you know, that's, that's sort of the roadmap. Um, and that's Diego. Thanks to all these people, the core team, all these friends at Pivotal who've helped, and uh, Michael Frankel from IBM, and, and Momchil Ethnasso from SAP, who've been wonderful help as well. Thanks, y'all.